Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today I want to take a look at an example from section 311. This is on related rates. Uh, this is uh, an example similar to this, uh, number, no, excuse me, number 10. Uh, it says sand falls from an overhead bin and accumulates in a conical pile. It's like a cone with a radius that is always three times its height. Suppose the height of the pile increases at a rate of three centimeters per second. And this is when the pile is 12 centimeters high. At what rate is the sand leaving the bin at that instant? Uh, let V and H be the volume and height of the cone, respectively, and write an equation that relates V and H and does not include uh, the radius of the cone. All right. So let's kind of get started here. So uh, the volume of a cone is volume is equal to it's a third of the volume of a cylinder of the same height and that is one third pi r squared times the height so a, a cylinder is just pi r squared times the height and a cone is one third of it so this is the volume of a cone now they give us that its radius is always three times its height for this problem here. So we have a little substitution. Radius is always three times the height. So I can write this. And they want us to uh, get rid of the radius and put it in terms of height. So I can just make a nice substitution there. So we're going to say volume is equal to one third pi. And instead of R, I'm going to make that substitution here. So 3H squared times the height. And then we're just going to clean this up a little bit. So 1 third times pi. Uh, 3H squared is going to be 9H squared. 9H squared times H. And finally, we're going to get one third oops let me take that back here because one third times nine is three and pi and h squared times h is h cubed so with this nice little um, substitution uh, this is our new volume formula for this particular cone here that has this nice property that the radius is always three times its height. All right, so now uh, with these kind of related rates problems, uh, it's really important that we kind of understand what they're asking and what we're looking for and how we use uh, differentiation in order to kind of find uh, what we need. So this is, this is what I like to do. All right, so in the problem here, they say we have the rate and they have, look, they have the, the three centimeters, which is our height, over seconds, which is time. So look at that. They're giving us, they're giving us a dH, right? That's the dH over dt, right? They're giving us a dH over dt. That's going to be equal to three, right? Three centimeters per second right and we also have an h a height which is equal to 12 centimeters there right 12 centimeters uh, they want us to find that the rate that the sand is leaving so they want us to find the rate at which the volume is leaving so that's going to be the the rate at which the volume is leaving with respect to time. So there we want to find the d the the rate. So that's the dv over dt. So that's going to kind of be a question mark. So we're kind of writing down what we know and what we're trying to find here. So if they're talking about rates, uh, that, that's going to be derivatives here with respect to usually time. Um, and so we kind of using this it's going to tell us what direction to go over here so in order to get a dh over dt 
I'm going to have to differentiate this right side over here with respect to time, because that'll give me a dh over dt here, where I can then substitute that. Um, if I differentiate the left side over here with respect to time, that'll give me the dv over dt, right? And then I can, that'll, I'll still have an h over here in order to substitute this in here over there. And it looks like that should kind of fill in all my gaps for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just differentiate both sides of this with respect to time. Now notice that if I had left the radius in there and I had a, just the radius in here, there, there's no radius information that they're giving me and no radius information they're asking for. So I would have kind of been stuck. So that's why they're kind of pointing me in the direction of get rid of your radius because, uh, you know, there's nothing in there I would have been able to, to use. So they're, they're kind of guiding me in that sense. They're saying, hey, uh, we're not giving you any information to be able to put that in there. So that's why we're, we're, we're getting you to change the formula out of radius and, and just strictly into height. All right. So if I take... If I do kind of the implicit differentiation rules and I uh, differenti differentiate both sides of this with respect to time, that'll just give you the dv over dt on the left-hand side. And on the right, I'm just going to have, that's going to be power rule here. So you bring the 3 down. So 3 times 3 is 9. Pi is just a constant that stays there. Uh, this becomes h squared, and then we have the dh over dt because we have to put that there because we differentiated with respect to time. And remember, when we did the implicit differentiation a couple of sections back, uh, since we're differentiating with respect to time and h is not the variable of time, then we have to put this little, you know, something else in there. All right, so now we have this thing here. So this is, this is what we're trying to solve for. So that's good. Uh, this is something that they give us in the problem. So that's good. We can substitute that three in there. We have this H here. Good. We know what that is. That's the 12. And everything else is, is looking good. So this thing is going to be equal to 9 times pi, right, times, times h. What is h? That's going to be 12 squared times, and dh over dt is just 3, right? And, uh, you know, I mean, I could put in all of the um, units if I want to, but if I know at the end I'm getting volume over seconds, so that's going to be centimeters cubed over seconds to the first power, then I don't really need to put them all in there. Uh, then. Then I'm good. I'm good. So now, if I put this all together, this is going to be 144 times 3 times 9 times pi. I can just leave it in terms of pi for now. So this is going to be equal to 3,888 pi. Centim and this is centimeters cubed per second. So the answer is... At what rate is the sand leaving the bin at that instant? It's leaving at a rate of 3,888 pi cubic centimeters per second. And this is this is how we go about finding it out. And this is how we're going to do all of these problems. Is that when they're talking about rates, that's usually going to be uh, the D whatever kind of measurement they're talking about. Usually over D the time, uh, most of the time they're talking about time, um, and then they're going to give us usually some type of measurement there, and we just kind of have to find the information and then get it in terms of whatever the information they give us and, and solve it like that. All right, if you all have any questions, let me know.
and uh, get ready for the test this week. I hope you all have a good week, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.